Dear Jane, how am I feeling? A mixed bag, I suppose. Ashamed, angry, frustrated, hopeful, motivated, and fearful. I hope that my story can help raise some awareness about the many, many incarcerated addicts. All right, I'm rolling. Awesome. All right, I can't even remember what day it is. Today is Wednesday, June 13th. Today is Monday, January 10th, 13th, 13th. 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 Elliot Hudson is a former addictions counselor from Ottawa. I wrote him a letter uh, asking if he wanted to talk to me about the issue of rehabilitation. There are a lot of people behind bars in Canada and a lot of those people struggle with mental health and addiction. And I've been very interested in how we are helping those people, how we are helping them get sober and clean and live a life after jail. I woke up clean and sober this morning. I have no intentions of using today and, and hopefully I go to bed the same way. Elliot has struggled for a long time to stay sober. Since 2018, I have documented Elliot's life in and out of jail, watching him wrestle with why he keeps going back to substances he knows are destroying his life. Okay, I'll stop. Okay. All right. Hello. We're out. Good. My greatest fear on leaving is that I'm going to get stuck in the system. Um, this is now my second time uh, at this facility and I've met a lot of men in here who've been in and out of jail since you know the age of 17 or, or even 16 um, and I know how easy it is now to get stuck in the system. I'm not denying the fact that I broke the law and I deserve to be punished for that. I started committing petty crimes. Um, the first crime I was convicted of was uh, possession of a controlled substance. The culmination was uh, on the, about the third week of October, I committed two robberies um, and that was to get money to, uh, to get drugs and alcohol. The second robbery was at this Ottawa gas station in October 2017. I asked the staff, you know, how long until I go to treatment and, and they sort of brushed it off and said, well, I mean, we, we don't have any say about that. The only thing you can do is put in a request form to talk to the social worker. So I did that. Um, that took two to three weeks. And when I met with social work, they said, oh, well, the way that it works is we have to um, do an assessment with you. So I went from feeling like I was going to be in treatment pretty much right away to um, feeling like it might be indefinite. While he was in jail waiting to be sentenced, Elliot assaulted a correctional officer. I was just not in a good place at all. My mom had, had just died recently. I was... Uh, had spent time in isolation. I was I was a mess, and uh, yeah, I got into a bad situation, and it escalated very quickly. I had six months added to my sentence for that. The judge who sentenced Elliot told him this: obviously, alcohol has led you down this path, and it's time to deal with it. Elliot started drinking when he was a teenager. He was what he considered to be a functioning alcoholic in his early 20s, but by his late 20s, he had added drugs to the mix people who end up uh, in conflict with the law, um, people who end up um, in cages in, in our jails and our prisons. Uh, many of them are living with mental health uh, or drug use issues or both. Elliot has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, depression, and anxiety. In August 2018, he was transferred to St. Lawrence Valley, a center for convicted men diagnosed with serious mental illness. These programs are overwhelmed by demand. But for Elliot, this was the first time he says he received any treatment for his addictions while in prison. One of the main stated goals of Canadian Corrections is to help prepare offenders like Elliot to reintegrate successfully back into society. That's why they deliver treatment programs like those that target substance abuse and mental health. But a 2019 report by the Auditor General found that correctional institutions were not suited to manage inmates with such concerns because most of the institutions do not have the appropriate facilities to hold them. One of the issues that kept coming up every time Elliot and I spoke was how his efforts to try to help himself and others were being shut down by the prison. I wanted to kind of organize us to, to work together to support each other um, and corrections shut it down because they didn't want us, um, they didn't want us meeting as a group. Um, and they, they say that it's for security reasons. 
We emailed the Ontario government about this, and it said there are no policies prohibiting the gathering of inmates. The way that the system uh, interacts with them uh, often sets them up for, for failure, um, that it, it in fact continues to criminalize them uh, for uh, behaviors that otherwise, uh, for other people, wouldn't be criminalizable. Elliot was granted parole in February 2019 under the condition that he not drink. He was sent back to prison within days. March 2019. Hello, Jane. Well, my carefully prepared parole plan fell through pretty quickly. A week after my release, I was drunk, and my parole officer put out a Canada-wide warrant for my arrest last Friday because not drinking was one of my parole conditions. I'm trying to figure out where I went wrong. I was returned to custody. So uh, that was pretty difficult. With four weeks uh, until I get out, um, one of the big fears uh, is relapse, for sure. Um, I can do all of the preparation work that I want in here, which is a safe environment, but when I get out, um, a lot of those supports disappear. In October, Elliot was released from prison for what he hopes will be the last time. He was sober for the first six days, seven days, um, and then he relapsed. Elliot moved in with an old friend just before Christmas, and in January, he marked one month sober, a milestone he was cautiously optimistic about. My therapist reminds me not to create a problem where there isn't one, and there's no problem right now. I'm, I'm happy. Reflections on addiction. Recovery is about recovering a genuine connection with ourselves. Until we treat the underlying cause, it will simply continue to change forms. Recovering what? Recovering who we were meant to be. 